I'm Thomas Baldrick, joined by our friend, Dr. Richard Chanick from Massachusetts General Hospital. Thank you for spending some time out of your busy schedule. My pleasure. Let's talk about the occurrence of pulmonary hypertension following pulmonary embolism. I know this is an area that you're working on. Yeah, so this, this is a very important topic. Uh, pulmonary embolism is a extremely common event. It's estimated over half a million people have a pulmonary embolism a year, and we hear about them in the news with celebrities and sports figures that have had pulmonary emboli, in some cases fatal. Um, and so one of the concerns or questions we have is what happens after a patient survives an acute pulmonary embolism? How often do they go on to develop chronic problems related to that event? And it's a difficult area because, you know, these people often don't get standard follow-up testing. So what we did in, uh, I think, a, a sort of a novel way was to look at some of these large um, databases that, that cover millions of lives, as we call it, in, in patients based on insurance claims. And using the ICD-9 coding system, we're able to look at, in, in a system called LifeLink, that has data on over 70 million lives, we're able to look at claims based on the code and found, in fact, over 7,000 patients in this one year period uh, were coded for pulmonary embolism. And that represented the group that were then followed a year and two years to see how many subsequent claims were made for pulmonary hypertension. And then importantly, what testing was done. And so with that, we were able to determine that about 8% of patients after an acute PE had a subsequent claim for pulmonary hypertension based on the coding we used. That's a high number. <laughs> if it's true, that 8% of patients after an acute pulmonary embolism may develop this chronic problem. We also looked further at how many had a claim for left-sided heart disease, because one of the causes of PH, common cause, is left heart disease. And about half of those patients had a claim for left heart disease. But still, that leaves, you know, three and a half, four percent of patients developing or having a claim at least for pulmonary hypertension not due to left heart disease. Finally then, we looked at how many of those patients had uh, testing done for chronic pulmonary embolism. So that might be a group of patients we might say have CTEF. And unfortunately, only about 20% of patients had the VQ scan, which is really the test of choice. So, a lot of data, but what it tells us at the end of the day is that the incidence of CTEF or pulmonary hypertension may be far higher than we thought after a PE, but the test of choice, the VQ scan, is underutilized grossly. So there's a lot we can bite into with this very large analysis that um, may be very important. So how do you make use of this information you have and this high volume of patients that you have? I think we make use of it in a number of ways. I think it, certainly in an educational fashion to just communicate how infrequently in this large real life uh, analysis, how infrequently the proper testing is done gives us a basis to continue to educate about this is the test of choice. Secondly, we need to really try to get deeper into these patients to see if it's really 4% of patients developing CTEF, that's tens of thousands of patients who might benefit, in fact, from a surgery to remove these clots. And there aren't tens of thousands of patients undergoing the surgery. So really, again, it gets to education that as we go out and speak about the need for follow-up detailed testing, and either clinical follow-up or diagnostic follow-up, this is a very important uh, study, I, I really think. And, and we're gonna really use this study to go out there and start to educate. And obviously forums like this is a good place to start. This is really a 21st century study, you know, at its core. Being able to take advantage of the advances in technology and use it to help people and save lives. That's got to be really exciting. It's, it's great stuff, I agree. Thank you, sir. Come back and keep us posted, would you? Will do. Okay.